what's up? This is Cedric McMillan here with my boy and teammate Sean Roden. Uh, we're here for SciTech Nutrition, uh, Arnold Classic Madrid, um, out here uh, at the expo right now. And uh, basically, he stopped by to, to chill with us for a couple of hours here on Sunday. This is the last day of the expo. Uh, the Arnold Classic Europe was yesterday. Uh, he placed a, I think, a well respectable second place. Uh, you know, and, and on a positive note, you know, looking back at you know, how the Olympia weekend went and everything. Uh, I definitely was cheering for you. Um, I had to pull out of the show, of course, uh, but you getting third place there and then coming here and getting second. Uh, but what I want to talk to you about, though, is mainly, you know, your preparation for these shows coming up this year. You know, you had a whole year to get ready, you know, and was focused on it, try to add a little more size and everything and bring that same conditioning that you brought. So basically what I'm asking you is how did you feel about the package that you brought and how was your prep getting ready for this year? Wow, um, prep for this year. It's uh, quite interesting. It's been a, you know, a very long year. Started out in um, February uh, when I just signed with SciTech. Uh, thank you guys for the support. And you know, I didn't want to bring a bigger package to be competitive with uh, bigger guys, but at the same time, you know, keep my symmetry. And you know, at the end of the day, I felt as if I brought the best I could for that weekend. And that's the only thing I could, you know, be thankful for. Yeah. Um, you know, just looking back, uh, I'm one of the few guys, you know, in the upper echelon that's constantly making improvement for each show. You know, so when all is said and done, can't be mad. You know, you just got to smile and wave and uh, move on to the next event. Yeah, that's, that's right. You know, and, and you got to admit, you know, uh, kind of with the way the show places have been going this year, you know, I don't know if it's a Team Macedo thing or a SciTech Nutrition thing, you know, but to keep it on a positive note, we would have liked to have seen some better placings, you know, and could have possibly been deserving. Uh, but one thing I feel that we have been doing for the last few years is making improvements, like you said. We've been making a lot of noise. I think that's the problem. <laughs> they say uh, they want guys like us, like me and Cedric, and, you know, we keep bringing it, but at the end of the day, it's like there's a pause, like uh, uh, it's not your time yet. So we just got to keep rolling with it and just keep bringing the same packages to each show. You know, it would have been nice if I had my wingman, you know, at the Olympia. It's kind of left me out there to dry, you know, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I know the best is yet to come. And, you know, we're going to keep pushing forward until, you know, they just can't stop us anymore. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I, you know, I have to thank them for, the love that they're constantly giving us and yeah. you know um, Team Macedo you know we had uh, quite a few guys that qualified for the Olympia uh, this year so you know and you have a uh, six SciTech athletes you know that was uh, qualified also yeah. so you know with that combination it would just just keep pushing forward. One thing I definitely know is uh, I believe taking a book out of Dexter Jackson a page out of Dexter Jackson's book I think man you know, and, and I can honestly say I, f I fell victim to uh, trying to push too hard to make myself into something else in order to fit the mold and fit what's necessary to try to win. You know, like, for example, with me, they always say, oh, you got to be dry, you got to be dry, you got to be dry. And then they pushing you, oh, you need to be bigger, you need to be thicker, you need to be more aggressive, blah, 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 right? But I think in the long run, I think what's going to be best for us is to just perfect what we are, you know? Instead of trying to reinvent ourselves, you know, instead of trying to go out there and be something else and look like something else, let's just try to perfect what we have already. What you think about yeah, that? Obviously, you know what? Um, just looking back at this you know, whole uh, past two weekend, you know, if you try to be who you're not, uh, you're going to get screwed, you know? You know, so at the end of the day, it's like, hey, you know, this is what God gave me, and, you know, I just, just build on it, work on it, and just work on me, and continue to show up being the best me at every event that I go to, and not worry about be what anybody else has to say, because at the end of the day, we're going to be judged. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter how great you look, you're going to be judged at the end of the day, and if you don't feel comfortable in your own skin, it's going to show, you know, so just got to work and continue working with what I got, and keep showing up the best that I can. That's right. Yeah, and, and definitely, you know, me and you are always in contact, you know, keeping up with each other when we prepping and getting ready for shows, motivating each other and stuff like that. So I definitely think for both of us, longevity is going to be the key. You know, you got some people that come in and make a whole lot of noise for a couple of years, and then you start seeing their physiques go downhill. 
you know, but I think, you know, with the look that we have and the package that we bring, you know, if we just hang in there, don't worry about the places that, like you said, the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come, man. And we both turned pro in the same year and uh, we just slowly keep climbing and, and we're just going to wait and wait our turn. <laughs> yeah, and and, and one, one other thing, too, you know, you have a lot of people on social media, even here at the Expo, everywhere you go, people will say to you, oh, you should have won this show. You should have won that show. Oh, you know, and same with me, Cedric, you should have won Ohio. You should have placed high, you know, stuff like that. But one thing you got to stop and take a look at every once in a while is, you know what, man, who knows what you could have been doing in life or where you could have been. And then you decided to get into this bodybuilding thing. And then you decided to get back into this bodybuilding thing. So you got to admit, even though it might feel like sometimes you don't get what you deserve, that damn it, you, you're doing pretty good for yourself, right? I am very thankful to be doing what I'm yeah. doing. I'm uh, truly blessed to uh, call myself an IBB pro and to, to be working out and getting paid for it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so at the end of the day, I'm going to continue to smile and wave and say, uh, you know, thank you. Uh, you know, first or last, you know, smile and wave and just keep rolling because, yeah. you know, I've, I'm a big fan of bodybuilding and I have a passion for what I do and just sort of continue doing what I'm doing as long yeah. as I enjoy it. That's it. Once the enjoyment is gone, then I know it's time for me to walk away. Yeah. And a lot of times, fr you know, getting frustrated over places and stuff like that can take away the enjoyment if you get caught up in that, right? I, I walk off stage and I turn the page and I sit on to the next chapter and um, that's where I leave it at, you know, because you, you know, sometimes you do get caught up in, you know, this guy and that guy, and you know that could consume you. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, trying trying not to get that happen, and just to focus on what's next. Yeah. You know, there's so so much other things in life that you know we need to focus on. And if you have bodybuilding consume you, you forget about the other aspect of your life. So yeah. we'll just continue rolling and see what happens. Yeah. And also, you know, it seems like you know, and we're gonna make this last point before we close. It seems like the fans are demanding a change in physiques. The industry is talking about what they consider to be the negative parts of the physiques, you know, in competitions right now, as though they want to change. But it seems like all the moving pieces and all the parts that need to work together in order to create or, or allow that change ain't quite ready yet, right? So basically what and me and him have already talked about this but what we need you guys as fans to do is just try to be as patient as we are you know uh, you know it, it's a little bit more dangerous for us to try to make noise and talk about how we feel you know inside about all this stuff but you guys can be the ones to you know keep supporting us the way you do you know and, and keep your voice you know um, we got to go out and work so it's nice to have the voice up for uh loyal fans and yeah. social media that could uh, be the voice for us and go out and continue to support and say hey you know what this is the look that we're looking for you know this is the look that we want and yeah. you know that just support goes a long way for us because yeah. now we have a voice yeah. we could speak with our body but that's just about it yeah. <laughs> and, and you know and honestly it's different strokes for different folks you know you got different type of physiques out there and you got different type of fans too that prefer you know different looks but one thing we know for sure that there's a lot of people out there that appreciate Sean Roden physique. A lot of people, people out there that appreciate our physiques. And what we definitely want to do is just thank y'all for the support that you give us and thank you for appreciating us. You know, you keep cheering for us, keep supporting us, and we'll keep giving you something to cheer about. Progress, not perfection. The best is yet to come. And, and that's yet another hashtag from his Instagram account. He's got like a whole book of them. You, you, got, you got another hashtag? Success never sleep <laughs> and never too whole <laughs> yeah. to get big. And the, <laughs> the journey, the journey of a thousand, what is it, a thousand steps? Come on, man. Begins with? The journey of one over a thousand miles begins with a single step. Okay, that, another, that's a long ass hashtag. Anyway, this is Sean Roden. We right here at the Honor Classic Europe, Cedric McMillan for SciTech Nutrition. Thank you. 25,000. Dollars goes to Sarone. The flexor is the running up tonight. He won the winner in 2012. Tonight he is the runner up. San Rode se va a quedar también sin poder lograr el segundo título en Arnold Classic.
This is Rosanna Peckett representing Muscle Company. We bring the checks. $25,000 worth. Son Roden, the winner in 2012, receiving the medal from the hands of Mrs. Rosanna Beckett. Congratulations on $25,000. Enhorabuena. Okay, this is Cedric McMillan, uh, here with Brandon Curry. Uh, we're at the SciTech Nutrition booth, Arnold Classic Europe uh, in Madrid. This is the expo hall here, this is day three. Uh, we were finally able to catch up with Brandon Curry after a very long competition year. Started out uh, doing the Arnold Classic in Ohio and all the way down now to the Arnold Classic uh, in Madrid, in Europe. Uh, had a very long year, uh, had a productive year as well. Um, did a lot of shows. Uh, I think you're going to do FIBO with us as well on the cancellation. Um, but then, of course, all the Arnold's so far. All the Arnold's. Yeah, but 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 one highlight was the show that you did up in Toronto. Right. Yeah, so what, what, he was actually able to pull out a win there. So tell me, how was the prep for you there? How did it go for you? And was it anything different that you did for Toronto's show as opposed to all the other shows? Or do you just think you hit your peak or what? Uh, really, uh, I came in that show kind of kind of off. I came right from Brazil. I was home for a day. Flew right into Toronto. Uh, I actually overcalculated and I looked better the morning of this show. Decided I was going to pull a bit more water. So I actually softened up show time. So I actually happy I pulled that out looking the way I did. I was like, I mean, it's like 80, 80 percent. But it, no, didn't nobody else really show up that day. So I ended up pulling it out on my aesthetics, of course. Uh, so it was a good show as far as that was concerned. Uh, you know, I take a win. You, you take that when you get them because, you know, yeah, no, they hard to come by for me, so I'll go ahead and take, definitely take them. Hey, you bring up a good point, though, because a lot of times uh, when we do competitions, people look and they say, okay, you know, such and such didn't look too good, uh, his condition, or such and such looked good, he was conditioned. But a lot of times, that's just a matter of your skin getting thin and that and, and uh, being able to drop that water because everybody going to do the cardio. Everybody going to get the body fat off. But whether you got a little layer of water under your skin, or not is what's going to determine how sharp you look, right? But people always talk about condition, condition, like you've been lazy and didn't do your cardio, but that ain't necessarily what it is, right? Nah, it's funny. I was talking to Dex last night. He got that snake skin, man, that old man snake yeah. skin. And I said, man, that's, that's what make you different than everybody else, man. You got so much transparency. Yeah. It's like, you know, you, you may not be leaning to nobody else, but, man, you can see right through that, yeah. Yeah. see yeah. straight to the muscles. So, I mean, it's definitely, it's you know, I guess with age and that thin skin, those factors, factors you try to control, but... Yeah. I mean, sometimes you just got it, sometimes you don't, sometimes you got to wait on it. That's right. That's right. Sometimes it just takes you doing shows year after year and getting your body better and better. Some some people, I, I think conditioning sometimes is a, is a case of genetics. In some cases, just like muscle shape and size can be genetic as well. Just I think condition can, can be genetic. And if you don't have it, if you're a little behind the eight ball and don't get your condition right away, that might be something you have to develop over time, just like some people have to develop muscle size over time. Well, we, we take an example like Branch Warren is known for his conditioning, but you know, over the years, his back was always soft. So he, he'd be sharp and hard and grainy everywhere else. Uh -huh. And then you turn around and you go, what happened? So yeah. it definitely has some kind of genetic factor. And I think age also plays a part. But, uh, you know, you just keep working at it and hopefully eventually things start changing. The judges started noticing. Yeah. And, you know, we pursue this out of love. So, uh, you know, we're going to keep on doing it anyway. You know, they're going to they gonna, <laughs> they gonna make us work for it. But we're going to keep on doing it anyway because we love it. And the point, of, the point is not necessarily trying to make yourself look like somebody else, but it's just trying to improve your own look, right? That's exactly right. I mean, and it, trying to make sure yourself look like somebody else is a lost cause. Uh, you only got the tools that you, you're able to work with, so your strength and weakness is uh, the only thing you got to deal with. So I'm always trying to improve my weaknesses, and, uh, and that's what really helps you shine on stage. And one thing, one thing you got to admit, uh, and, and even when you turn pro, you know, I was just getting into bodybuilding. I was still an amateur, you know, working my way up like uh, the junior USAs and going to the nationals and stuff like that. And I was always a fan of your physique. And uh, 
But one thing I wanted to ask you is this this off season and getting ready for this show, did you have any areas that you wanted to try to work on and try to improve? Because a lot of people like beginners will look at us and think we got everything. You know, but from your perspective, is it anything that you really wanted to try to improve or that you was able to make some improvements on this year? You know, it's always the same for me. It's been the same for years. Out of sweep has pretty much been the struggle. Uh, you know, just that leg uh, width, you know, from the from the back, the hamstrings, the glute development, you know, you always wanted to capitalize, cap that off, and then, you know, everybody want a better back. You know, that's just how it goes. But, when it, you know, when it comes down to it, it's, it's almost always the same. The strength of the strength, you know, that's kind of what got you your recognition, got you started in bodybuilding. But if you want to continue to have that career, you got to continue to close those gaps, you know, so you can improve upon your physique and and really just, you know, I mean that's what that's what it's about conquering uh, conquering those challenges. Hey, so what you what you if you could or if you would take the time to talk to somebody, let's, that might be on the internet and might have some criticism to give somebody like you and say, oh well whatever the weakness might be, well, he need to work on such and such more. He need to try to get his legs bigger. He not need to try to get his back thicker. The damn truth is we working on everything and we, the weaknesses that these people see, we seen them years before we was even on display. So it's not like we, oh, you know what? I didn't even know I had small legs. I didn't even know my calves was too high. You know, we already know that stuff, right? What you think about, about people and their criticism? I mean, people and their criticism, they criticize you when uh, they feel like it. I mean, we got people at the top, you know, Dennis Wolf, uh, Dexter Jackson, you know, those guys don't have, known for great calves. You criticize them all day. It ain't going to change. They still winning money, right? Yeah. So, I mean, it, criticism is that, it's just that, man. It's something that, you know, people don't have nothing better else to do. They just want, want to critique you. Yeah. And you know, give you a hard time, but I mean, we just take it as it. I mean, as far as they know, uh, one of the things that keeps coming up—if you got something that keeps coming up about you—I mean, you can overcome that, and you can you can actually do something better. But they gonna keep on saying the same thing. That's right. You know, so, so if they always saying all oh, your condition is off, you could be come in and show in shape, and they can people gonna still be saying, yeah. "Oh, his conditioning was off," yeah. and it's the best you ever looked. Yeah. So it's it's just sometimes that stuff is regurgitated over and over again, yeah. and people won't let it go. I mean. That's just how bodybuilding is. It's just the culture. Yeah, and some people they just go by what they see on the internet forums and stuff like that, and they don't. They maybe not even really have no cre no credible judging eye to be able to look at something and and see what's really there. You know, like you know, somebody might say, "Oh, Cedric need to bring his legs up." Shit, I might have brought him up two inches this year. You know, for all you know, you really don't know. You know, but 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 that part of it is the entertainment factor, and that's them sitting at home chilling enjoying talking shit you know about whatever right and you know they always got a recommendation of what you're not doing yeah but if you've been in this game long enough a lot of times the recommendations that they give out don't work <laughs> you know what i'm saying that's the stuff that you know that they they believe that oh this guy did it this is the way it should be but that guy he's genetically prone for that you can't follow his routine and yeah. expect to get the get the gains if you're not genetically prone to that so you got to rework it that's drop the load really focus on what you're doing to get those muscles to respond yeah. so yeah, everybody said, oh, you ain't squatting heavy enough. Man, I squatted heavy for years, yeah, man. Right. Played football, heavy, heavy squatter, man. Yeah. It never really make my legs grow yeah, yeah, yeah. until I start getting the volume in there. So yeah. it's just it's just a matter of doing you, closing out all the ears, and just yeah. make sure you focus on being a better bodybuilder. Yeah, and, and, and for those out there, for those of you that might be beginners, you know, that's watching for inspiration and motivation, you know, sometimes we have genetic limitations. Sometimes, sometimes genetic limitations may not allow certain body parts to grow as much as you would like them to grow. Uh, and you're going to have people out there that criticize that. But what you need to just do, and he's giving you a few tips of some things that you could do to try to improve a body part, basically what it all boils down to is doing the best you can to try to find what could work on those body parts, do the best you can to try to improve them, and just be you and be happy with what God gave you, right? Yes, you know, it's just a challenge. It's all about the feel. If you're not feeling it, it don't matter how much weight you're using. That's right. I mean, it's just those simple, simple tactics, basic bodybuilding. And we got to stick to that. A lot of times, the people that get the most hype are the people that are always lifting the heavy weights, posting the videos. That's right. But you know, really, that's entertainment value. That's not true bodybuilding. Yeah. So when you get back to the bodybuilding, it's about you know making sure every area is is really stimulated, yeah. and uh, it really don't matter you know what, what kind of tools or what kind of load you use to get there. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Well, now we've had, like I said, such a long year. I don't know how you feel, but coming from like a very long weekend like the Olympia, I know my first time going there. It was like, man, it's four days of events to just be on stage for about 45 seconds. Uh, 
some people really enjoy that time where they get to be, you know, have their little bit of uh, shine and, you know, get to be out in the public eye like that at the Olympia Expo and on the Olympia stage. How you feel being up there on that big stage? Hey, man, it's work, man. I mean, the day you're supposed to be carving up, you know, getting ready for prejudging, yeah. you, you busy as you busy as hell, to be honest, man. Yeah. You can't eat. You so busy, man. It's hard to get your meals in, man. So it's a challenge. Being in Olympia is just a challenge. I mean, uh, timing it, you know, when you're going to do your water and all this kind of stuff because you got a two-day show, it's a challenge, man. And I'll be honest with you, this year I was all thrown off because it's been a whole, like, I think a year since I've been on that stage. So I wasn't even ready yeah. this year to, for that adjustments, yeah. man. So I, my body started really rebounding before I even got to the stage. I was like, dang. Yeah. But, you know, it's, when it's just done, it's done. But it's... The Olympia is no joke, man. It's 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 a uh, definitely a, a show for champions, but you got to map out all the the other stuff as well. It's not just come and compete. It's come entertain, you know, please the media, please the fans. I mean, it's it's a lot of work. So respect that. I respect everybody that steps on that stage. And, and a lot of times people put so much focus on what placing did you get, you know, what place did you get, you know, oh you didn't place at the Olympia and things like that, but. Man, it's really a blessing to even be able to get there or to even be able to win a pro show because there's a lot of there's a lot of guys out there that's current pro bodybuilders, you know, that ain't ever won a show or haven't been to the Olympia yet, you know, that's trying to get there. You know, so a lot of times you gotta look at the glass as being half full, you know, and sometimes we might miss our mark and whatnot, but we here, you know, and we actually have this opportunity to live this life and do the best we can. Hey man, it's definitely a blessing, man. I don't take it for granted. And we just continue to appreciate all the fans' and support yeah. for Team SciTech, man. We are definitely representing this year. Got a surprise for you for next year. Okay. But, you know, it's, 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 it's going to be bigger and better, man. We always try to do bigger and better things as a team. Okay. And as a fellow family, man, I got four kids. You got, you got four as well, so you kind of know how that is, prepping and doing all the stuff you have to do for bodybuilding, but then also having a whole bunch of kids running around the house like they crazy, you know, stuff like that. That can be challenging, you know, because a lot of guys ain't got no kids. They can just play PlayStation all day, so they don't know the struggle. Yeah, they definitely don't know the struggle, man. You got, especially when they busy, man. My kids do a little bit of everything. I got a, I got a football player, a soccer player, and another soccer player, <laughs> and I got one, and he just, his, his sport is take everything out of where it was and spread it around the house. That's all he do all day, so. Yeah. I mean, so they keep us busy. So I'm a busy guy, and they busy. You know, we try to keep them their lives as much as normal as possible. But, yeah. you know, you just got to do what you got to do. It took a lot of maturing for me to kind of be able to be a bodybuilder and kind of, you know, keep my family in the position that they should. But, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take it away. I would, uh, those slow times when, you know, you're having a rough time when they come up and mess with you and make you yeah, smile, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, that's, that's what it's all about. So, I, you know, I do this as much for them as I do for me. So They eat candy and cookies around me. And that, that make me cheat on my diet. They, they offer me. And my little one, he he come up. Oh, I post a video. He come up and try to give me a slice of pizza. I'm like, sit on my lap. When I'm like a week out. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Is it anybody? I know you already thank SciTech Nutrition for the support. Came on the team this year. Is it anybody back on the home front? People at the gym. Anybody like that that you want to thank for the support that you've had for this long year? Of course, man. I want to thank my wife, my my kids. Of course. You know when I'm a knucklehead and I can't really focus and. You know, I'm stressed out. You know, they deal with me then. And then I want to thank my training partner, Rich Burke, my homeboy, Sean Barber, at the gym, man. Keep on uh, pushing the Olympics, man. We, we're down there getting some serious work done. Uh, home of uh, Brandon Curry and, uh, you know, the 202, 212 champion, uh, Flex Lewis. So we get it in down there. The whole bodybuilding community down in Murfreesboro is growing as well. Don't forget my show, November 7th, Music City Muscle, downtown Nashville, Tennessee. The biggest show in the state of Tennessee, hopefully again this year. We're going to do a big... Uh, just come out and enjoy what we do for the fans and for, and for the competitors. All right, well, that's going to do it for us. we got a lot of people waiting in line for us to get back over there to the booth so we can sign pictures and do, aut or do autographs and take pictures and everything with them. So we got to go because they're getting mad at us. But this is Cedric McMillan, Brandon Curry for SciTech Nutrition at the Honor Classic Europe in Madrid, the Expo. Peace.
Okay, this is Cedric McMillan, Fuad Abiyad, coming to you from the Arnold Classic in Europe here in Madrid. We're at the Expo, day three. Uh, basically, just want to take a little time to talk to Fuad. You guys know he's been crazy busy this year. Uh, had a good, productive off-season, uh, working with his trainer, Mountain Dog, and uh, prepared for almost five shows. We had a cancellation at FIBO. Yeah. That was upsetting because both of us was going to do that show. Yeah. Had three shows and uh, then was going to start looking towards the Olympia, but decided to go ahead and press the brakes on that. You know, don't want to push yourselves too far. So talk to us a little bit about how your offseason went, uh, the changes that you made, and then your preparation getting into these three shows. Uh, because everybody has to admit, we've seen some of the best Fuad Abiy we've ever seen this year. Yeah. What do you think? The offseason was pretty good. I mean, it, it was really for the first time in a long time, pretty regimented. I started hanging out. We moved out. We moved, me and my wife moved from Windsor to Toronto. So I started hanging out with a group of younger guys and it kind of reminded me what it was to be diligent and stay on top of things. Cause you know, as we get older, we start to skip meals or we miss this or we miss that. We think we can get away from it, but you can't get away with it. Doesn't matter how old you are, how good you are. So some of these guys reminded me, hey, you can't miss this meal. You can't, you can't leave that little bit of steak on your plate. And you know, another thing that younger guys will remind you of, they will remind you how much you loved bodybuilding. Remember when you just loved training and loved the fact that you wanted to be a bodybuilder and wanted to compete? And with us doing it for so long and maybe having disappointing losses and things like that, it make us lose uh, a little bit of that passion, right? And that drive that young guys have. Yeah, no, you're 100% right. You start to feel like you're doing all this for nothing and you can never get ahead. But then when you're out a bunch of young guys, they, they remind you that you're doing it for fun. So I had a lot of fun this off season, man. I was just training, eating. I didn't miss nothing. Very, very consistent. So I think that's where the gains came from. As far as FIBO goes, I was looking forward to beating Cedric. No, but uh, that was disappointing. I remember I talked to Cedric the day that we found out and we confirmed. And then I said to him, well, I'm going to the buffet. And he said, I'm going to the buffet too. So we both took it easy for a little bit. But uh, luckily for me, Orlando is around the corner. And uh, after, after the FIBO cancellation, I teamed up with, Mountain Dog was always doing my training, but I'd let him, I decided to let him do my nutrition as well. So we put together a package for Orlando that I thought was pretty good. And I ended up pulling out my first IFBB win. So it was pretty amazing. And then from there we qualified for the Olympia and he wanted me to shut it down. But I mean, Cedric knows I'm a little bit high strung. I have a problem being patient and waiting. Yeah. So I thought, you know what? This will keep me in shape if I keep competing. So I thought, I'll do Vancouver, I'll do Tampa Bay, it'll keep me in shape. Yeah. And then I'll do the Olymp Olympia. So I think I just kept getting, getting better and better. For Tampa, we might have pushed it a little bit too hard. I still knocked out a second place I was happy with. Um, for the Olympia, I think my body was just a little run down. It was time to kind of turn things down a bit and try and come back better next year. Now, one thing, you know, a lot of people think, uh, you know, after you get your qualification, you know, okay, you should be done competing for right now, go into the Olympia. Uh, and me and you talked about this yesterday. You know, a lot of times for us, uh, competing is not so much about just getting a qualification. Uh, for years, you and I both have done just one show, shut it down till next year. Uh, but what we've learned is, you know, when you do multiple shows, you know, at least w for one year, try to do multiple shows. It gives you a chance to get to know your body a little better. Uh, if you're already lean, it's easier for you then to take maybe a slightly different approach and try to see how that works with your body for the next prep for the next show. Is yeah. that right? No, 100 percent. We uh, me and me and John Meadows, we kind of took a little bit of a small, small change in each approach. To Orlando, Vancouver, and Tampa Bay. And now I know next year moving in, the Vancouver approach I think was the best. We didn't carb load as heavy. Like for Tampa Bay, we pushed it a little too hard. Don't tell all the secrets. <laughs> Don't worry. For Tampa, we pushed it too hard. For, Van for Orlando, we didn't push it hard enough. Vancouver, I think I figured out the formula. So hopefully next year, whether it be the Arnolds or whether it be Toronto or possibly Kevin Lavroni's new show, I think we kind of have a good formula of what we're going to end up doing. Yeah. And basically then you'll just go right into the same approach that you felt like worked the best like for Vancouver, right? Yes. Yeah, exactly. I think right now my, my I've kind of put my mind at ease competition-wise. I think I know what we want to do getting ready. Now my main focus is putting on another five pounds of muscle so I can 
come back with a new package even better than last year. Me and you being at this expo three years ago, just me and you, right? Yeah. Maybe uh, Eddie Abu running around acting crazy every once in a while, but yeah. it was just me and you walking around the expo talking shit, you know? Yeah. Um, for all these years, you know, SciTech standing by you, you know, supporting you. How has it been, you know, being, being a part of Team SciTech? I think it's been pretty amazing, man. You know, I've had to miss a few occasions, whether it be Birmingham, because I promote, promote my own show, and SciTech's always been really understanding. They kind of know when we're, when we're dieting. They know they always have our food ready for us. They're willing to take us to the gym at the drop of a hat. And you know what? Signing all the new guys has been pretty cool. Like, you know what I mean? We got Sean Roden now. We got Ben Pikulski. We got Brandon Curry. We got a lot of new guys. And we probably got a few more coming on board, too. So it's been great, man. sidex has been a great, a great team for me. They, they're always willing to back me for any show and take care of me and make sure I got what I need to, to get better. Well, I don't like it when they sign other people because I get jealous. I just want to be the only one here, you know? I can kind of deal with Fuad a little bit. I get jealous of him too, but I just wish it was just me all by myself. <laughs> but anyway, uh, this is Cedric Fuad. You want to give a shout out to anybody, you know, especially to thank them for uh, the support, the help for this year so far? Actually, you know what? I want to thank SciTech first and foremost, but I also want to thank my fans. A lot of these people here in Madrid, they keep coming back. This is my third year here, and they keep coming back with their phones, and they're like, look, me and you took a picture last year, and we took a picture two years ago, and I follow you on Instagram, and I follow you on Facebook. So I actually really want to thank all the people that support me because it means a lot. And I don't know if you guys realize this, and I'm sure Cedric feels the same way, but when you guys support us, it makes us want to work harder. So I just want to thank you guys first and foremost. And, and, that, and that little wife of yours? Oh, my wife knows, man. She's always, uh, she's always first. I mean, she, uh, Cedric knows me personally. I can be an asshole at times. Yes, a big one. <laughs> my wife's got to my wife's got to deal with that every day. So of course, she's uh she's my number one love and she's always got my back. Yeah. So definitely Satek Nutrition, the young guys at the gym with Fuad. I got one more. Okay. I just want to thank John Meadows. He all, he also puts up with my craziness. So I'm sure me and him are going to do big things this year. Yep. So the young guys at the gym, Satek Nutrition, yep. the, wife, the wife, John Meadows. Yep. And thank me for putting up with your ass at the booth. Actually, I, I'm going to thank Cedric this time. He, when I was getting ready for Orlando, he let me chill out at one of the expos because we were so busy and I was feeling really drained. He's like, you know what, you just go sit down and, uh, and I'll take care of it. Yeah. So it worked out. So actually, I do want to thank him. And I haven't repaid him because he's dieting now. Yeah. And I'm the, still the one sitting down. So. Fu I can be a real crybaby sometime, man. Like for real. He's a real crybaby. You see this shirt right here? We were supposed to wear neon green shirts today. On, and I like neon green. And he was like, oh, why we gotta wear these? Why we can't just wear the yellow ones? So now we got on fucking yellow because that's what he wanted to wear. All right, you guys right into SciTech and you tell me, do you like the deep yellow better or do you like the flashy bright neon yellow? And just say you like whatever Cedric like. That's what that's the answer, okay? <laughs> All right, this is Cedric McMillan, Fuad Abiyad, SciTech Nutrition Booth, the Arnold Classic Europe in Madrid, the Expo. Thank you.